What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 1 of my Football Manager 2018 FC Social Montbelliard Let's Play and uh, well, I'm excited to get into this. This is episode 1, this is the beginning and well, we have a golden generation to try and develop into a league uh, side and uh, well, if you aren't new around here, first and foremost, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you are going to enjoy this series. I did, of course, do a little bit of a club overview kind of introductory video to FC Social Montbelliard, which I recommend you check out. I'll put a YouTube card to it in the top right. And you join me here at the end of pre-season of our first season. And I've had a, a chance to acclimatise myself with the squad, get used to some of the players, and hopefully kind of prepare ourselves for this our first season in this second tier of France. As you can see, looking at the league dirt table, it's a team full of some fairly recognisable names, you know, certainly former uh, League Earth sides of kind of years gone past, and it's going to be competitive here. Our season expectation from the board is a top half finish. We are predicted to finish 10th, so right on the cusp of that top half finish. And given the real rebuild that I've kind of started already, uh, that might be a little bit of a challenge here in our first year. So looking at the first team, just a quick look, you can see the overall squad balance is in a pretty good shape right now. We have a large first team with some very exciting young players. Uh, the young players I've actually created notes for with a little yellow square and well, hopefully over the first few episodes of this series, we'll quickly get you up to speed with the players to keep an eye out on and you know, just my general thoughts. So anyway, I guess the first thing to talk about is the transfers and what we did because there was a little bit of a dilemma that I had and that came down to the fact that I had little to no money to work with and ultimately I decided to sell Musa Sal, our star man, for £1.1 million. It was the best offer I got for him. It also freed up a little bit of wage budget and that money kind of allowed me to reinvest it into a few different positions to hopefully develop our team going forward. So he has gone out. He is going to be a big miss, uh, but he only had a year left on his contract, and as part of the wider rebuild that I want to do here, it's just kind of a deal that made sense. On the ins, I've only brought in four players so far, so not a massive overhaul. The first player, Rafael Diara, an exciting young prospect of the past. At 22 years old, he was deemed by AS Monaco, kind of no longer needed. We've brought him in for a very cheap fee. I think, to, you know, £150,000 is not too bad at all. Can play centre-back, can play right-back. I like the look of him, and he's going to add a little bit of strength and depth into one of the positions that I was immediately concerned about when I first took over. Anyway, the next player we brought in, Pana, is an Angolan international, a little bit unusual. He does speak Portuguese, however, so he doesn't count as a foreign player, which is nice. And looking at him, you can see he's a very, very solid centre midfielder. When I looked through the team as a whole... We were very gifted in the kind of defensive midfielder department. You know, we had a few players such as Florian Tardio uh, and, well, who else we got? Uh, Jean Do Fuchs, uh, who are very good kind of defensive sentiments, but I had no one with that great drive and ability going forward. And as part of my attacking system that I'll come on to shortly, I wanted to play a Mazala. I wanted to play a player who can play very attacking. And this guy, I think, is going to be capable of doing this for us. You can see here, very well-rounded. His finishing and long shots definitely let him down. But we can give him the instruction to shoot less often. And I think for what is an absolute bargain fee of £50,000... We've got a fantastic little sign in there, but definitely one of the best players in the team immediately. Anyway, anyway, with the departure of Musa Sal, I did have to bring in a replacement, and that came in the form of Rafael Martinho. Uh, you can see here the Brazilian is 29 years old. He's a fairly good winger. He came in for a fraction of the price of the Sal sale. For £150,000 is not a small fee by any means, but the 29-year-old Brazilian uh, kind of helps us in two ways. First and foremost, he's a very, very good winger, which is something that we are going to be playing and I'm also looking to train him to play centre mid as a Mazala and uh, he will be good backup in that area of the pitch as I mentioned centre mid wise going forward we were definitely lacking when I first joined anyway the last signing that's happening immediately at least is a Vasco Costa uh, this Portuguese player joins us and it's going to be our kind of third or fourth choice striker this year we were definitely lacking in the attacker department with only kind of three or four strikers and Costa slots in nicely at 25 years old wages weren't too big you can see here, £70,000 paid. Just a really big, good bit of smart business. A well-rounded forge, you know, doesn't really shine anywhere. But he's a jack of all trades, and that's kind of what we need, I feel like, in our system. Anyway, there is one more transfer that we did immediately, and, uh, well, it's not gone through yet, and that was Douglas Pote. 
or Potty, I don't know how to say it, answers on a postcard. Uh, but this guy, the 20-year-old Brazilian, one of my kind of go-to players this year in FM. Uh, he is part of my Wonderkid shortlist that's on the Steam's workshop, and we've signed him for £50,000. Yes, that is ridiculously cheap. He looks very, very solid, a really good inside forward out on the right-hand side. And uh, unfortunately, whilst he isn't joining us till January, I have high hopes and aspirations for this guy to come big for the club and be a key player that we can build around for the years going forward. So you may have noticed there, there was a little bit of a trend emerging, with Martinho, Costa, Pana, and also Pote coming in. All of them speak Portuguese, and I feel like that harks back to the team dynamics and social groups. Of course, Football Manager this year has the new dynamic system, and bringing in a number of players who speak Portuguese kind of made sense. You know, I signed one or two of them, and it quickly became apparent, hang on a minute, there's kind of a little set that I can build up here. So they will probably end up being a secondary social group within the club. Anyway, looking at the hierarchy, the player who really holds all the cards in terms of uh, the leadership is Florian here. Very good player, the ball-winning midfielder, a good defensive midfielder his vision and passing could be a little bit better he's going to struggle to really play as a deep line playmaker for us but at 25 years old you can see he's a player who joined the club a number of years ago and has been a driving force behind this team during its kind of stint in the second tier here in France Anyway, beyond him, a few other players worth perhaps taking a look at. I'm going to definitely butcher these um, pronunciations, so I will apologise in advance. We have here Florian uh, Berengua. Uh, you can see here, 28 years old, can play a variety of positions in the attacking midfield department. A good little player, definitely uh, a good influential player. We have Gibaud, uh, who here you can see can play across the back four, a very versatile player. Given the fact I like to play with wing backs, he's probably not going to be a full back for us. In fact, I already know for a fact that in the ideal scenario, he will be a centre back for us. You can see very well suited to, the, to this role. Perhaps somewhat let down by his ability in the air, but at 29 years old, a very experienced player, which given a number of young players I'm going to be bringing into the squad, is going to be important. Anyway, here we have Adolf uh, Tiekitio. I uh, Again, I'm butchering these pronunciations. It's going to be fun. Uh, for those of you who have been around on my channel for a while, you're used to it by now, I'm sure. If you're new around here, I will apologise in advance. My pronunciations will make your ears bleed. But anyway, this guy here, very good player, 27 years old. Uh, probably only going to be a backup centre-back for us. I like him, but his lack of pace is a bit of a concern for me if I'm kind of being completely honest. However, um, who knows, you know, a few injuries, he would come into the first team, and maybe he can prove himself then. Anyway, the last of our influential players, it's another Florian, it's Florian Martin this time. 27 years old, very good left winger, can also play centre-mid, and uh, yeah, they are kind of the, the players who hold all the cards. As I said, over the course of the first few episodes, I'm sure you'll become familiar with who's who. In terms of the tactical system, I'm going to be playing here. Uh, this is the plan. It's a 4-2-3-1 asymmetric system. It's a tactic that I did a little bit of testing with during the beta. I honestly don't know how well it's going to work in the full game of FM18. However, asymmetric tactics as a whole seem to be working quite well. And, uh, well, this one is a little bit unique. A fluid attacking style where we are going to look to drop deeper and uh, be more expressive with a lower tempo. And well, we're dropping deeper, obviously. These players all playing on support in the attacking midfielder department will drop that little bit more. However, um, when we do have the ball, they're going to look to get forward. We're going to look to get the overlaps on, kind of dominate the ball where we can in the final third. And uh, well, given how pre-season's gone, I'm, I, I want to say I'm optimistic. I don't feel like we were truly tested. We did take on Ongers here, who you can see we lost to 2 1. They are a League 1 side, so they are a good team. So that result wasn't really a massive disservice, although, of course, with it being pre season. I don't feel like you can read into it too much. I do also have a secondary system, which is a 4-1-4-1. We may kind of apply this in case of emergencies, of course. If that does ever happen, you will see it first here. And it will be a system that we perhaps deploy against some of the big dogs in our league. Because there are certainly teams that do scare me just a little bit. Anyway, in terms of the first game that we have this season, it's going to be against this team, who again, pronunciations are going to be so appalling. It's uh, Burg en Bresse. Uh, definitely not correct. They're a team who have been in the mid-table similarly to us, so a team who I'm hoping we can start off with a win against. In terms of the team itself, just to give you an overview of the starting eleven, we have got a few injuries, including to Jean Ruiz, who would probably start, but with the exception of this guy, uh, the rest of the team is the best kind of eleven in my opinion. We have here Max, 
Uh, I'm going to call. I should nickname all these players. That would definitely make things easy, easier. We have Max here, who's a 20-year-old uh, goalkeeper, a very good player, well-rounded, a player with some potential as well. Looking at his report, you can see he's suited to this division, could improve a lot in the future, and he's one of a few kind of players in the first team who are definitely going to be getting regular first-team football in the hope that they can develop. Anyway, here we have Badish. Uh, he is a Moroccan player. You can see 28 years old. Perhaps the weak link across the back four. Our defence is very solid. He's a little bit lacking. We do have an alternate to him in Pendant here. Who you can see here is a 20-year-old youngster who I definitely want to give some first-team football to in the full-back area. But given the fact we're playing with wing-backs, he kind of lacks just a little bit going forward. Anyway, across the back we have Florent Aguilla, uh, 28 years old. Very, very good centre-back, this guy. Really like the look of him. Alongside him, we of course have Gibaud, uh, who I've already talked about. Again, very good centre back. Uh, we have here Alfonso, uh, who is a right back, a player who I have tried to get his contract extended. And he wanted a lot of money, and it kind of resulted in us having a bit of a fight. A player with one year left on his contract, a very good player, someone who I would like, ideally, to keep at the club. You can see he's going to be playing against his former club today as well. Anyway, Tadio is going to be playing that centre defensive mid position. Penner, who he brought in or rather Panna, who we brought in, is going to be playing the Mazzala on attack role. The attacking midfields, we go with Rafael Martinho, uh, playing out on the left. In the centre, we go with Berengua, uh, who is going to be playing the advanced playmaker. Out on the right, we go with Actas, one of the best young players in this side. Really excited to see how this guy gets on. And then up front, a player who, uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what to expect of him. He looks very good, Andriat Sima. However, um, he is 33 years old. This is probably his last year at the club. He'd be a leading player for this division. He enjoys big matches and is consistent. He's not slow for his age either, let's be honest. He looks very, very good. And I'm hoping that he is going to be the goal-scoring threat to propel us up the league table this year. So anyway, let's get into our first game here. Of course, the first episode of any FM save is always a little bit interesting. You know, you want to give an overview of the club, kind of my general thoughts on how I've been approaching things. But at the same time, there's just yeah, there's that fear that you go into information overload. So... The best thing to do is just start with a game, start with a win. Let's see how we get on here. You can see they are playing a very narrow system. I might change things up here. Um, I might change things up here. I might change our fullbacks to be more, more attacking. Um, go out there and impress me tonight. I'm going to change our full wingbacks to play on attack, I think, given what I've now seen. They're playing that very narrow 4 one 2, one, two. I've got to be honest, in Football Manager, um, it, it's... It's one of those tactics which I just I've always struggled with. So it, uh, to play against it, I'm kind of looking forward to that. This will now be the moment where I lose to this tactic. But generally speaking, I feel like any attempt I've ever made to play that narrow four one two one two really hasn't worked with us. But anyway, what we're going to do here is we'll be playing on three D, of course. And well, Rafael Martino playing on his debut, can he make something happen? I mean, he's a man to keep an eye out. Um, worth noting, I think I mentioned it already, but the players marked with yellow squares I've added notes to, they are the hot prospects in the side. They are the young players that I'm looking to build around. There are a few of them in the first team. There are a number of them in the reserve team as well, and I'm sure you'll become familiar with some of them over the course of this. But anyway, we're on the attack here. To Pana at the edge of the box, tackle comes flying in, but Tadio repossesses the ball and gives it to Actas. Looks at the wing back on the attack. Who has got room to move into? Whips it in. Header, back post. Martinho Panna on his debut. And while two of the new signings hitting it off with a bang. The two Portuguese speaking players. They link up well. We are top of the league. So we are top of the league. We might have to just say it now because we're not going to be able to enjoy it, I don't think, for that long. Nice play here, though. The wing backs getting into those advanced areas. As I said, they are going to be struggling, I feel like, to defend against us here. And well, Martino pulls it back. Panna smashes it in. Nice finish by him. A player who, of course, is playing that new role, the Mazala on attack. I did talk about the fact he doesn't have great shooting or long shots. Maybe he's just going to be one of those players who just finds the back of the net. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? But anyway, 20 minutes gone. We are looking fairly good at the moment. We're yet to have a shot against us, although they could be looking to break through here. Aguirre, no nonsense. Big ball up to Andriat Sima. I feel like we're going to need to come up with nicknames. As Andriat Sima misses twice. Two clear-cut opportunities there. Keeper actually, I think, saved both of them, which was really impressive. But, uh, well, a chance to take the lead in this, our first match in charge, is squandered. 
half an hour gone. The tactic seems to be working so good so far. You know, it's you know so far so good. We we can't really complain. It's adventure into the own, unknown. This isometric system, as I mentioned, I played it a little bit during the beta in my own kind of time. I did use a similar system during the Liverpool Let's Play. However, using it with kind of a lower caliber of players, any tactic, you never quite know what to expect. But so far. We're yet to have a shot against us on target, or a shot against us at all, which is, I think, a fairly good sign. And, well, if we could get a second before half-time, that would make me a very happy man. Panna here is lacking match fitness, but one goal to his name. Berdic whips it in. Cleared of way as far as Aktas, the 18-year-old player. And, well, the wing-back, with all the space to whip it into, puts in the cross. Terrible play. Aktas capitalises on the mistake. The 18-year-old... And, well, that's his first ever goal for the club. Welcome to the senior team, my friend. You are going to be, I think, a key player for us in years to come. Involved in this build-up play early on, dropping in deep. But look at the way he makes that run. He makes the effort to get to the final third. And he puts himself in a position to capitalise on that mistake. And, well, it's one of those mistakes where if it goes against you in FM, you sit there cursing the game and blaming it for everything. When it goes your way, you don't complain one little bit. But anyway, perfect start to our time here. Go tell the players. I'm very happy with the way things are going. They are loving it. I'm loving it. We're all loving it. Can we have more of that in the second half? I mean, I was a little bit worried that we were going to get overwhelmed in the centre of the midfield, but that really hasn't happened here. We've, you know, stretched them wide. We've created channels for our players to move into. And the system really seems to be working, you know. When we don't have the ball, we drop deeper. makes it more difficult for them to get shots away. And, well, for a second, I thought we were going to get a third. We would have been in heaven right there. I think that was a clear-cut chance as well. So perhaps Adriat Sima should have done uh, a little bit better there. Anyway, time ticking away. Adriat Sima's not the greatest against. So we're going to take him off. I think we're going to bring in Robin A, uh, this guy. Uh, good potential. Not great potential, I guess. But he looks like he could be a good advance forward for us. And I feel like today is the day to give him the nod. To set him out there, unleash him, and see if he can get a senior goal to start off the season. Now, Adriat Sima, not a bad performance by him. I feel like given his age, we are going to need to protect him a little bit. You know, we're going to have to uh, not overexert him. He does have good natural fitness, but I always feel like with a player who's 33 years old, you kind of have to err on the side of caution. 20 minutes left. I could change the tactic. I don't think we're going to because... We've not had a shot on target against us yet. This has been such a dominant display. Really impressive play by the whole team. You can see the average ratings are really solid. And Panna, he, it's always great in FM when you have a player who makes his debut for you. You're bringing him to do a job and he just has the dream debut. I think we're going to take him off here because he was lacking a little bit of match fitness. And in his place, we're going to bring in Fuchs. The 19-year-old definitely needs to play some first-team football. You can see here, as a Mazala on attack, he's a little bit limited in terms of going forward. His flair finishing... Uh, vision and also off the ball just let him down a smidge however he's definitely going to be able to fill in this role and I feel like in this kind of game with the game I think at this point just about done Panna tiring slightly it's going to be vital I think this year with the rebuild that we give young players like Fuchs uh, a chance in the first team anyway he's going to come on maybe he can get a goal in the last five minutes that would be the dream I don't think it's going to happen unfortunately as time is just dwindling away here but what a start this is a rampant 2-0 performance and well, they've not had a shot on target, which is a fairly good sign. Zaktas, I thought for a second he might double his tally, gets dispossessed. I mean, I'd like to keep the clean sheet if possible. They're looking to hit us on the break here. Look at the amount of men we've got isolating the fullback. He just kicks it into no man's land. Had no options out wide for him to go uh, to. No one inside really making a run. And that is the perfect start. 2-0 win, exactly what we needed. A clean sheet. I am a very, very happy bunny. That was a great win for us. And also good to see the young players chipping in and really making a contribution in that match. Panna made his debut, got a goal on his debut, and was man of the match. Mate, you, I'm pat on the back for you right there. That was really impressive. Um, yeah, what, what a start that is. We're not top of the league, unfortunately, but we have put ourselves in a good situation to start things off. Of course, uh, in terms of when we'll be back, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't really know who are going to be the teams who are really fighting against just yet. I will probably be aiming to do an episode perhaps every month. Maybe it'll be slightly more frequent if we have a run of important games. But, um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode. A little bit of an unusual one, I guess. You know, getting to grips with the team, butchering some pronunciations, getting a win on the board. In the end, I think it wasn't too bad. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Check out the link in the description. I'll put a series playlist there. If you want to see the introductory video to this club, I definitely recommend it. So show our team with some interesting history. In that video, I do talk about the squad a little as well. And, uh, well, hopefully I see you guys in the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.